resources when you are done with them. Cool. So there's that. I've got some more resources groups here. What did I build? J group, that's right. So yesterday I built an ACR and an AKS cluster. So I've been messing around with this AKS cluster a little bit because I've been just trying to like create some automation around creating um, new uh, Kubernetes clusters. So one of the things that I went ahead and I did yesterday, um, I wrote a, I did a series of tweets about it. Um, what I created was a really simple way to uh, build new Kubernetes, Kubernetes clusters. Uh, I have this ACR, AKS, all-in-one script that I wrote. Uh, and if you look at it, you'll see it's just uh, adding some variables and then uh, running a bash script and the bash script is going to um, get an application ID and a password for rel based authentication. Um, we'll get some variables and then we'll create a resource group. Uh, after we create a resource group, we'll create uh, a Kubernetes cluster. We'll get the, uh, the resource password or the AKS password. Um, and uh, we, we can work from there. Um, and then we import the password into our local machine. Um, and now we're able to create an ACR, ACR stuff like that. Uh, so now we've got uh, where we can create our nodes. We can look at our nodes and it tells you what your essential, or I should say what your credentials were. Anyhow. Uh, I ran this yesterday, and I guess I can show you exactly what it it looks like when you run it. So let's go to AKS. So we'll get started with a group name that we have to give it. And a uh, group name is just a resource group that we're going to keep. Uh, so in this case right here, we've got J group. Um, so what are we going to do here? We're going to just put in what that is going to be, J group, just the resource uh, group of where we're going to keep the uh, the stuff, the Kubernetes clusters, the ACR, stuff like that, where it's all going to live. So um, I'm going to show you how that's built on, like what I built here, in here. So the group name, uh, I'm going to call um, live on Twitch. And then the location, we're going to peak East US. Uh, the AKS name, that's going to be the name of the actual Kubernetes cluster that we're going to create. And we'll call it Live on Twitch AKS. And then the ACR, the Azure Kubernetes, or I should say the Azure Container Registry, where you're going to create your Docker images and store them. We'll keep them in here. Uh, we'll give it a name. We'll call it Live on Twitch ACR. Cool. Uh, and then we need to find out the Kubernetes version that we're going to do. So we, we spit, we could just do this in another spot here. Uh, just so you know, I'm going to be using a, uh, the AZCLI. To do that, you're going to want to make sure you're logged in to your AZCLI account. Um, if you don't want to do it on your local computer, you can do a lot of the stuff you're watching me do in the Azure Cloud Shell, uh, so you don't have to install anything. Uh, I just want to show you the simple way right now, and so I'm just doing it on my computer. Uh, when I do live demos, though, I really tend to do them in this cloud shell because I don't have to worry about a lot of the authentication portions of it. Uh, it really reduces like the amount of time that I'm spending on that. All right, cool. But anyway, uh, so what am I doing now? I need to get the version of Kubernetes that I want installed on the actual cluster. But here's the thing. Uh, each region in Azure may have different versions of Kubernetes available to you. Um, it could be just because of availability on that region, you name it, whatever. Uh, so you'll have to find out what versions of Kubernetes are available and what you can upgrade to in the future. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the location variable that we're going to be using, and then I'm going to run um, this command that I've commented in here. And you can get the version of Kubernetes that are available uh, in the region right here. So this has given me all the available versions of Kubernetes in the region that we're actually going to be building the cluster. So in this case, we've got 14.7, uh, uh, and we can upgrade the 114.7 uh, to all these different versions. Uh, and we've got here the latest version. And if I want to pick the latest version, I'll just go ahead and copy it. Pop this sucker in here. Now let's look, in, let's look a little bit further down here what's actually going to be created. So we create a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we add monitoring, we put application routing, um, we specify the version, we create the SSH key so that we get into it, we actually provide the service principle, username, and password. So we're going to use all the kind of default Kubernetes settings in AKS, like we're not going to go ahead and um, do anything as far as uh, additional uh, nodes in the pool. We're going to start with the standard three. That's kind of the way it is by default. Um, so let's let's get to business. So I've picked all the things that I need here. And like I said, it's just a couple of um, entries of your uh, variables that you want to fill in. Uh, at some point, I want to take this and make it so that you just do it all via the command line flags. Uh, so you could just basically run like that and then name. I I'm going to do it at some point. I just haven't written it yet. But anyway, so here's this. Let's go ahead and run this script. I guess I can just do bash AKSACR. So what's going to happen right now? I am going to kind of recreate what's in this J group. Uh, I'm going to recreate that um, with this new... So the first thing that the script does is creates a, a key pair for role-based authentication. So it's an app ID and a password. Uh, and this helps tie the application uh, ID RBAC information uh, from your Azure Kubernetes cluster that you're creating right now to um, what's going to be the... Azure Container Registry. So what we want to do is create a trust between the two. Uh, right now what I'm doing is I'm building the cluster to say that these are valid authentication credentials to use to create a trust between it and another resource on Azure. So uh, eventually what I'm going to do uh, at the back end of this script, and I'll show you it right now actually, I'll show it to you in GitHub because I think it'll be easier to look at. And then you can actually, if you want to go to it yourself, you can. So, one of the things that happens at the end uh, of the script is that, so it creates the cluster. It takes about 86 minutes. And then after that, it's going to take the credentials, put it to your local user that you're running the script from. So it's going to just put the uh, the uh, Kubernetes kubectl um, credentials in by local user, and then after that, creates the ACR, the Azure Container Registry. Now, as you can see, creates the RBAC for Azure AD to permit a uh, build and pull from ACR to AKS cluster. So um, we get the ID of the service principal, we get the ACR resource ID, and then we create the role assignment. So we allow the role ACR pull uh, to be added to um, these two uh, resources that are going to be working together. Um, and so once that's all finished, I just send out an echo telling you it's done. Um, then uh, what I do is I do a, a node. Uh, I do nodes to go ahead and list what was created so, so you get an idea. And then I, um, I cat a temp file that keeps all the um, the RBAC credentials in there. So I want you to be able to have those for the future if you want to create additional uh, clusters using the same um, credential information. In, in that the case, what you would actually do um, is when you're creating it, you would probably just change these two variables uh, where you don't need to necessarily uh, get them. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that's very small that you can do. You basically wouldn't need to run these two.
uh, or I should say just this, you would really need to run this. And you would change the app ID to this username, and then you would change the pass to this password. You would just put them in quotes. Uh, so if you wanted to reuse those, you can. Um, I have to write a little something in there to make it so you can reuse, reuse things and make it easier for you. So let's go over to this side. We'll go to resource groups. We'll refresh and we'll see my new resource group that's been created live on Twitch. And now we're going to see that there's a live on Twitch AKS cluster that's being built. It's going to take a little while. Um, and the reason why it's going to take a little while is it's going to go through the creating process. Creating process is going to provision three individual VMs as nodes, and those nodes are uh, going to get provisioned as Kubernetes clusters, uh, or Kubernetes nodes, so all the uh, appropriate software for managing them, all that stuff is going to be installed. Uh, and then what we can do is start taking a look at our node pools. Um, so you'll see node pool one is being created right now. Like I said, the default number of nodes in the pool is going to be three, so that's three uh, VMs. Uh, and so if we wanted to, we could also create a cluster with multiple node pools. And so that's the ability to maybe use um, different CPU types. Uh, so maybe I wanted a portion of my infrastructure to uh, be on, let's say, a portion of my infrastructure I want to be on uh, a GPU and another portion of my infrastructure I want on a standard CPU. That's the kind of stuff that I could work out by using uh, node pools. Uh, right now I just have a single node pool and that single node pool is just going to be used for our cluster that we're working with right now. So it's creating that, like I said, it's going to have three, VM, three VMs and if we wanted to, uh, we can upgrade our cluster to a newer version of Kubernetes. That's what we had all this for. So as we uh, step through new versions of our application, we might want to might want to take advantage of newer versions of Kubernetes features. So what we'll always know is the current version we're on and the versions that we can upgrade to an AKS. Uh, that's what's really useful about this particular section is that what if I wasn't using the most up-to-date version, like let's say I was using 15.10, I could be able to go into this section and do rolling upgrades to uh, 116.7 uh, and not have to do it via command line or anything like that, just go in here and pick. We've got the ability to scale, so the number of uh, nodes that are part of a cluster. So it, right now the default is three, but if I wanted to bring it up, I would have to have the available capacity within my subscription. That's the most important thing. Um, these are things that you can do via the um, the CLI, so the, the AZ AKS. You'll see there's an AZ AKS CLI, and you can do all these things there. Uh, matter of fact, let's go to scale. And we get all the different types of scaling things about like our node pools situations. Um, so this is all still creating, but we can actually see additionally the doc, uh, I guess what you would call Docker-based networking uh, for, or Kubernetes-based networking so that we can uh, see our Docker bridge uh, and connect uh, pods to other pods uh, using the backend network that comes within Kubernetes. Uh, then we've got things that really could be useful for uh, those of you who want to implement CI/CD and have it live within uh, your, your app live within Kubernetes. You can go ahead, go to GitHub here, connect GitHub as my uh, application source. You can authorize my account. Sure. So now this is going to drag my application uh, credentials and I have um, all these different apps I've already built that I can actually work with to uh, deploy what I've got on here. So let's see what I've got. I got React Clock Basic, Master Branch, sure. It'll find my Docker file, my port that the app is running on, and the Docker file context. It will use a container registry that I've created to actually build my images, and then done. And now it's actually going to create a CI/CD continuous uh, delivery pipeline 
for, or at least I should say a CD pipeline. Um, you still need to handle the CI portion, and that, that's the actual cool thing is that what it's doing now is giving you a deployment target, uh, and so you can go ahead and work within uh, pipelines within GitHub to create tests. So just using actions, uh, you can deploy AKS to cluster. Uh, we could also create an action to do some tests against. So you can see we've got node CI uh, for it. If we wanted to, we can implement that workflow uh, within here and have it so that when we do our deployment to Kubernetes, we'll do testing, we'll do the whole nine yards. So let's take a look at where we're at. So it'll go through it and should eventually deploy it. And um, as you can see, our, our cluster is done. Um, we've got our uh, Kubernetes uh, node information. So kube cuddle, uh, get nodes. There we are, they're up, they are online. And um, I know we've got this stuff here, but if we wanted to, we could also do a deploy like I like this with hipster shop. I'm actually gonna kill this process. And I'm gonna use so the GCP people they put together is really great demo. Uh, that has it's great for Kubernetes to be honest with you, and um, it, it'll work with almost any version of Kubernetes. Uh, one of the things you can do is just run the uh, the images, and it can run on any Docker. Um, and so we're going to use this option three here using pre-built container images. So what I can do is just get the release manifest. So here are the release manifests. So what we'll do is we'll grab this file. Just gonna go and grab the raw. So let me get this. Now we have this Kubernetes manifest file right here. And what I can do is just run this uh, kubectl apply and uh, create our Kubernetes clusters uh, application from that pre-built images that we've already got. So before I actually run it, let's look at these manifests. Excuse me for being able to type. So what we've got here is a list of the different services that we're gonna create and the images that are based on. So. Here's the product catalog service. Um, if I'm right, this is gonna install uh, a number of different applications using Go, um, and then install Redis for a cache, and Jaeger, uh, all these different things that we're gonna need. Uh, so we've got a cart service. It's all gonna be stored uh, in pre-built, or I said it's already existing in pre-built images, so we don't have to build the images. Uh, but like I said, this is if you're just doing a deployment, you want to then work with it a little bit. So um, I'm not, don't have everything in the release directory, so I don't need to do it. So let's do this. So cuddle, uh, apply, minus F, that is manifest. Now, all the services that are required for Hipster Shop are going to be starting to be created. Um, and we get the IP of the, uh, the load balancer, so we get to the front then once it's done creating. Uh, but what we can do, if we want to do, is add a minus W to watch. And we could just watch the service as it goes and uh, creates our, uh, our new external public facing IP for our Hipster Shop application. Um, you want me to increase the font? Um, uh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, 
let me know if that's better. If, uh, if you have any issues um, with this type of stuff, always feel free to let me know. I want to make sure that it's visible because I'm still pretty new to Twitch streaming. No problem. Sorry, I, I needed to take a stopping point. Sorry. Uh, so the IP is done. The IP is ready. Let's uh, look at the rest of the services. So let's get services. Let's let's get pods. Okay. So some of the stuff is still building. Some of it's still running. I wonder what the crash loop back off is about. <laughs> well, we've got our IP. Let's uh, let's wait for it to actually load the application. It, it's probably still built. Yep, see, it's still building portions of the app. Uh, so we're gonna see this slowly come together as uh, Kubernetes goes ahead and takes all the different images and applies them to the, the various uh, pods and services that we've created. And uh, once we're done with this, one of the things we can do are work with services to do like additional uh, visibility. Um, so, maybe we could do some Datadog monitoring also. Um, so monitoring Kubernetes with Datadog, all right? Let's take a look at that. And the only reason I want, I mean, we've got a lot of uh, existing um, monitoring tools with Azure if we really wanted to use those. So um, what I can do is go to the insights section. If I install the insights information on the cluster, uh, I should be able to get a ton of info uh, at the container level to the, which I think is really important. So you can see all the container uh, services that are running. Uh, controllers that are currently running, you get utilization, statistics, metrics, whatever you need. Let's go to the individual nodes so we can actually like look at hardware utilization. Um, can take a look at that here. We can see all the Linux processes that we're currently monitoring and how they exist on the three nodes that we're currently using to ensure that we have availability of our cluster. Looks like that's still coming together. Looks like this is still building. Um, let's figure out why. Whatever it's in, Kupetal log. Let's figure out what's going on with current service. Okay, so probably Redis isn't up yet and that's why it's failing. So it might just be that we're just not completely up and so we have, yeah, so yeah, that's exactly what it was. So what I'm basically just did and I, I really should talk my way through what I just did. Um, I noticed that we're getting these crashbacks um, or crash loop backoffs 
which means that something in the container didn't work. Something's not building. Yep, and actually we can see like bits and pieces of the application are starting to come up, come up online now. Like, I'm getting a 500 because it's trying to do something within the cluster. More than likely, it's trying to connect to a service uh, that exists on 7000 uh, on this particular uh, pod, and it just hasn't come up yet. And so what we're doing is waiting for all these services to come up. What I wanted to do is I just wanted to check my, my process progress and so I noticed that the service um, let me go back right here the service cart service didn't really seem to be responding because if you look back here we were crashing and so what I want to do is figure out why it was crashing why it wasn't coming online and so what did I do I started with the really basic because I just wanted to get logs out of cart service, off one of the failed pods, and know exactly what the fuck happened. And so, this essentially told me that it was waiting for Redis, it couldn't connect to Redis, and because of that, the service was terminated. So let's go ahead and refresh this. Um, pieces of it should still be coming online. Uh, and you can see we still have some crash loop back offs, and I bet you it, it's just so log service, load generator. Oh, that's not a service. What is it? Is it a point? And so there's same situation of me looking at the logs for the load generator serve, um, deployment. That's that's a part of this application. And what happened here, as you can see. Uh, there's still more missing portions of our application. Something is supposed to be all running on 77, and D, and it's not up yet. Let's refresh again. So, as you can see, we're probably still waiting on the pods to finish building. Some more of the services are done. The Redis cart service is online, and there we go. So most of more of our services are done. So we can get. Services. Let's take a look at all the services that we expect to have be online or online. Uh, add service all seem to be there. Let's look at the deployments. Already all online. Load generator is a service. Um, I'm not really sure about recommendations. I've got to figure out if that's just not online yet. So let's do let's check on that okay okay I see so this was a variable that I needed to set this this Google application credentials I probably needed to set that variable somewhere in a YAML file and I just didn't, and because of that, it's not providing me with that application service. So let's look in. I wonder where that's supposed to be specified. I probably recommendation. All right, so here's the recommendation service. So there's got to be something within that particular image where I need to specify, um, and so it would probably need me doing some further docs tear down. And the answer, I'm not really into that at this moment. But hey, look, we've got our hipster shop. So let's see, unavailable subconscious transient data. So I wonder what service this is. Product. So fail to get product recommendations. So I wonder if the service is just not up yet. So yeah, I wonder what's going on with this recommendation service and do I need to specify that? So let's look in this. Let's take a look at this. Let's do a search. 
Weird. I don't know. Maybe I'm just still waiting for a service that's supposed to be running, or maybe something broken in the app. Um, it's really peculiar, though. Well, that's using a microservices demo. It looks like, for some reason, there's something wrong with their particular portion of it. Um, anyway, uh, that's that. Let's delete everything. So let's delete. I really want to figure out why this recommendation service isn't running. Services, get those, get pause. Let's try this. Run. I want to know why this fucking recommendation service isn't working. Okay, seems like this person had the same problem. Okay, interesting. 
So here we go. If you have the case of looking at it, so you have the below variable which are commented out by default. So let's find this. Okay, so if you have Kubernetes set up locally, getting an error log file was referring to Google. You have enabled the environment, which are commented and out by default. Okay, so let's see if we can find that. Oh, there it is, right there. There, very, very easily. So let's uncomment this up. Disable tracing, disable profiler. Okay, and then let's try adding this value as well. Okay, disabled stats. All right, so all these are disabled. Uh, hopefully it should take care of the problem. Let's... By our new updated manifest. Okay, line 40. What did I do wrong? see. Fucking YAML. I swear to God, YAML is the goddamn devil. Because slightest goddamn white space. Same shit if... Alright, so... Made some changes here to uh, configure services. Most of them were unchanged. Um, let's, let's see what happens. So it's recreating the email service. You know, it, it is very interesting that the person made mention that it is interesting that tracing service is in the critical path. Makes a lot of sense. A um, person brought up a, a good idea that maybe that they shouldn't have had this service involved in a public demo? Just an idea. Anyway, uh, you know, you, you build things and sometimes you hope for the best and sometimes the best doesn't work out, right? Right. All the services are running. Uh, the recommendation service is built. The 
recommendation service still. Like, even that low generation started, so... Go back to the manifest. I see where it needs to happen. I did it in the wrong spot. Disabled stats. Fucking moron. Alright, sorry to call myself a moron, but... All of these... All of these have stats and tracing. So there's the catalog service. Ad service. I, I just didn't look for the right one. So, product catalog. Currency. Shipping. Ads. Where's that recommendation? Recommendation service. Here we are. So let's. <sighs> All right. That was some fun troubleshooting, but I mean, hey, we troubleshooted it together, right? Let's disable this debugger. Hey, you know, that's the cool thing about, like, when you're working with deployments and building things in real time on your own and there's nobody watching you on fucking Twitch, is that you still go through the problems of struggling through what it exactly is you want to find to fix. Uh, so now we've gone ahead and we've disabled the tracing. Uh, if, if I was using a Git repository, I would check it into Git. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and let's, let's take a look at the service. Recommendation. Okay, cool. Now it's configured. So let's run Get pods. And so there we go. Now recommendation service is being rebuilt. So this is exactly what I was hoping to do. So it's actually killing the bad version of it. And it's starting to run the good version of it. And what we should see now here in Hipster Shop. There we go. We fixed it. You all helped me. Root and whoever the other person may be watching, you all helped me figure out what the hell it is by just watching me um, go through this process. But sometimes it really does come down to figuring out the little things and fucking Googling the answer. Um, I hope that is somewhat interesting to you. I know it's not the most fun thing to do is sit here and watch me troubleshoot a problem. But I mean, to be honest with you, while we're here doing shit on Twitch for the next few months, uh, and probably the unforeseeable future, um, we're going to have to do things like find problems and, and, and fix them in real time. So, um, let, let's take a look more. I said I wanted to do more monitoring. So what do they got? Monitoring Kubernetes with Datadog. So um, I have a Datadog account. I won't log in. Oh, I thought I had a blog on Google. So why Datadog today? Um, I could always use more metrics and, and ways to actually glean them. Um, so I'll just go into here. And what we'll do is we'll follow their, um, their stuff here for uh, getting it configured with an agent. So we're going to do the Kubernetes version. And so what we're going to do is follow their mutate advantage of daemon sets. Um, and yeah, yeah, so let's do that. So let's do these things that it says. So if your Kubernetes is role-based, then configure R back for your database agent, OK? So let's go ahead. We'll run these um, little bits here. Cool. So we created all the Kubernetes services. Now we need to create a key. We created the secret. 
Cool. Now we actually grab the manifest. Now we'll apply that. We could have used the helm chart, but I decided that I would use this method. I know it, it works. I've used it before. Oh, I misspelled data dog, my bad. Anyway, so now we've gone ahead and added it. And now, so we're just going to wait for the pods to create and the agent to the report and for us to get some information um, about what's going on so we'll give this a minute or so uh, and we'll go back to actually the Azure side of things and take a little bit more of a look on what we're able to do here We've got dev spaces also built into uh, Kubernetes this allows you to build and debug services in a cloud native application without needing to replicate or mock their dependencies so we've got all that check it out if you feel like it's something We've got policies Onboard to Azure Policy for AKS. You can apply at scale enforcements. That's really friggin' cool. Uh, I'm not going to do that for this particular cluster right now, but that sounds really awesome. Um, let's see if Datadog has found our agents yet. Nope, not yet. There it actually has. Now we've got our agents up and down. No agent running yet. Hmm, weird. I just hadn't finished noticing everything yet. Well, anyway, uh, I'll convert to a free plan. I think I had a, a trial for a pro plan for a while, just from doing a bunch of demos with it in the past. Let me update the tweet that I've been working with Datadog now. So I'm just sending out a tweet, just letting the people know what I've done. So I've installed the hipster shop, micro services on Azure Kubernetes service. Now I'm I troubleshooted. Um, failing service. Now we are configuring. Now I am configuring. Cool. So uh, I'm just going to stick with the free plan. Thanks. Choose my plan. Create my own plan. Wait, no, what? Just give me the free plan. Come on. There, confirm. Cool. Now I'm on the choose my plan. Choose my plan. Finalize an upgrade. All right, I'm not gonna do this. I don't want you all to watch my my information. That's that's. I don't want you to see my address. Um, let's take a look at the infrastructure though. That it, but show. Oh, there it is. So now we've got our node pool that we've got configured. Let's check out the monitors. Let's see if there's metrics available for me now. Yeah, we got some of the metrics here for the different systems and availability. Very cool. So yeah, now we've got 
Datadog configured to do metrics. The only reason I haven't uh, grabbed more or showed you more is because I have a real limited version of it. Um, and uh, I'm not going to be able to kind of do a whole ton of stuff without actually um, being able to have access to a better version of there. But you can see that what we've got are all the different services that we've done in events. They're all now stored uh, rather than me having to work within KubeCuddle to get information. And you can see this is all like recent. So this is everything that I've done. So it's already grabbed all the logs and uh, put the logs into everything and made it more, um, just made it easier for you to read uh, long term. And so that, that really ends up being super, super important when you're doing some sort of troubleshooting is actually being able to review um, the different uh, things that have happened from either the Docker level, um, the Kubernetes level, having it all available within um, the the portal uh, for Datadog makes it real simple. Uh, but also, like I said, we do have a ton of insights and metrics available for you built into the AKS service. So um, what we can do is go into metrics, go into insights, we can take a look at those and see how we can, you know, glean all these uh, additional statistics and metrics without necessarily needing another piece of software, which for some people could really be helpful. Um, you might not have the ability to spend or use it, uh, but anyway, we can build some custom dashboards. We can number of pods in a ready state. As you can see, as our application uh, came online, it was built. We saw more and more uh, containers and pods that were created. Uh, we can do uh, memory available, 14 gigs of memory based on all the different um, used uh, pods. So we've got all these different charts we created. And like I said, we looked at it before, uh, but insights really can help you get real time information and uh, let you view it at a cluster view. Uh, from a cluster view, there's also things that you can do on a container level, things like that. Um, so there are all these uh, built-in uh, container monitoring uh, I, uh, offers within Azure, so you don't necessarily need additional software like Datadog to do it. But like I said, they provide services that just make it easier. Uh, I really can appreciate this. So what's next? So um, I think it seems that you have the event collected, but I don't know for the logs. Okay, yeah, no, 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 that makes sense. Let's see uh, in events. Let me look in, um, thank you for mentioning that. That really helps. Uh, let me take a look and see if there's actually like better around event logging. I mean, I see that it's grabbing the events specifically. Um, it'd be interesting if it does capture log information. I guess if we're doing logs, we're talking more about Splunk. Um, and so that's down, oh, okay, thank you. Oh yeah, yeah, there it is. So let's see what kind of log data it actually collects. Uh, I'm really curious because I've spent some time with it, but not that much time. Okay, so I, okay, I need the, the better version is what we're going here. But this looks really cool. And I think that this is, is, is really helpful. I've seen this kind of in the paid version before. Um, and obviously I need to get uh, my friends at Datadog to give me a paid version. Uh, so what do we do next? What do we do next? I think we should do some chaos engineering. Um, let's tell my friends on Twitter. That's what we're gonna do next, all right? Okay, now that get a dog. Is running. Let's install Gremlin. So my friends at Gremlin uh, have been really cool and have given me uh, a, a paid version uh, to play around with. And so I um, want to say thank you to them. Anna Rules, if you don't know the people at Gremlin, 
I really, really recommend you uh, you, you reach out to their pro uh, and learn about their product. I'm going to bring it up right now. Cool. So let's do that. Just kind of mentioning what I'm doing next on Twitter. All right, so uh, my friends, like I said, from there have been really cool to me, and they've given me uh, an account. So what am I going to do with this thing, right? I'm going to create a tax. Um, how do I create a tax? Well, I got this group. Uh, it's time to listen to it, actually. So Sepultura old band you might know them you might not know them uh, they uh, have an album called chaos AD and uh, every time I do chaos engineering experiments I enjoy listening to the album chaos AD by um, Sepultura so when uh, I guess it was a couple months ago when I created my uh, my gremlin account I went ahead and I intentionally called it Sepultura. I am a friggin' nerd, I know it. Alright, let's get back into it. Thank you, I will reach out to support. Um, I still know a few Datadog people there. Um, I do miss having Jason so easily available to me, but I uh, know that I can probably reach out to um, some people over there and they will hook me up so I can do more of these things. So anyway, um, let's let's install Gremlin, right? Cool. So I need to get my credentials. So first I need to download my Gremlin certificates. Oh, okay, so I gotta do some certificate management. So let's do make their gremlin. So gremlin is going to do uh, software as a service based chaos engineering attacks on my cluster. And that will give me the ability to find like weak points in my, my, uh, my infrastructure. So if I want to do that, I think I can download my certificates here. Okay, cool. Here are my certificates. Let's download them. So, let me get that downloaded. Download, put them over here, unzip them, and then we'll follow the directions, okay? So, rename in the folder, so team, so scrimmon.cert. So, so, so we're going to do this. Private key becomes gremlin.key. So. And then bones.
Give me one second. Let's get back into it. So, okay, so we move those. Beta Kubernetes secret. First, we have to create a namespace. Dang, Kubernetes. So. Then we'll create the secret, following their instructions. Oh, we just need to fix these path dudes. We could just do it dot slash. Same thing here. So this is gonna create a secret. Oops, what did I do here? Did I find... Oh, no, that was my mistake. Okay. Yeah, I just... How the fuck did I do that? I just completely blew that. <laughs> Alright. What did I do there? Gremlin dot P. The Tem. Okay, that's what I did. Am I missing something? Where's the cert? I feel like something's missing here. Like, with list three... I only see two. Try this again. Stop fighting! Uh, let's create new certs. Whatever. Okay, we'll get rid of the old one. And we'll download this new one. Okay, so I'm confused, but but let's let's take a look again. Okay, so I I'm, I'm just a maniac. So I went too fast. This is the only way to describe what I was doing. So the prive key. Pub shirt pen. Yeah, okay, it becomes gremlin dot key. Oh, I see. <laughs> this is really, really peculiar, but whatever. So yeah, I, I'm gonna just fucking do it this way. The, 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 I don't understand why they kind of have their, their documentation that way. It looks a little funny. So let's just do it like this. See the certificate. 
the, the team, sir. from Gremlin is watching? I don't know if they are, but I, I don't really like the documentation around this installation. I don't know why. It just looks funny. Alright, so Gremlin.cert is team name pub. And then Five key is that one. So, okay. We're not slaves. We're free. Okay. I think this should be that. Okay, now we got our gremlin certificate created. It is going to grab a configuration. Got the ammo. My team ID. I'm gonna grab that here. Cluster name goes here. Team secret. So to get my team secret, okay. To get my team secret, I can go over here, and then I need to reset the secret key. I'll copy my secret key. And then I'll also create a cluster ID name, so I'm going to just call it, um, a hipster shop. And then that team secret before. Get back here. Download and apply. Oops, so first we gotta actually apply the manifest I just added, dummy. So, just do group cuddle, apply, minus F, create our gremlin, apply our client manifest, create the client, okay. Download the client manifest for your cluster and run this. We have secrets created. Okay. Client manifest. There we go. And then it's client manifest. Finally, we'll run that last one. Okay. We've already done all this, so um, we should be able to just go to the clients page and we should begin to start see our agents uh, installed on our infrastructure. Yep, there it is. Wow, that was fast, right? So, my infrastructure is ready to have attacks built against it.
Alright, so I think we're ready to start creating attacks. So, um, attacks can be run right from the, um, the interface. I'm just going to turn the music down just a bit. So now we're at the point where we're ready to start creating attacks. Attacks can be created right here. Um, we can just pick scenarios, get a particular a series of attacks that we want done. Or we can run a singular attack against an application. Um, and so let's, let's watch it all in real time, I suppose. So we've got... Our, uh, our Kubernetes cluster, the so kub, ctl, uh, get services. Cool. Get pods. And so we're going to watch our pods. And so what we'll do is we will create an attack. And what, what I think we we're going to do is we're going to go against Kubernetes. We're going to go after a particular deployment, I think. And I think what we should do is go after the front end. Um, the reason why, actually, no, let's, let's go after the Redis cart. Uh, because we, we noticed earlier that if we took out the Redis cart, it blew up the application. So, um, now we can choose the type of attack. Um, so why don't we... Let's do uh, a process killer or actually, you know what? Network. So let's just make it where it doesn't work. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll create a, a black hole. We'll do it for 60 cents. A 60 Actually, what am I talking? About? Interesting. I want to attack a particular. Let's let's do it this way. Containers. I want to target a service. Let's see. If I go to here, J Hipster Shop. Yeah. Choose a namespace. Default. Okay. So now deployments. The Redis cart. Um, let's see, network, black hole, does that do it? Nope. Actually, you know what, I think this is just to add additional. Okay, unleash crewman. Okay, let's go ahead and watch and see what happens. So let's find hipster shop. It's this IP. Hmm, something's not working. I wonder what oh so what it did was it killed Redis cart. And obviously, only having one pod for Redis cart is not going to be right. So, scale pods in Kubernetes. So, we can scale this up a little bit more. So, let's Redis or scale. So let's try this. So scaling a Take a look at it. What we need to do is we'll halt the attack. 
for now. Well, actually, it finished. Client aborted. It finished. Because it died. Let's take a look. I guess it killed it. <laughs> it really killed it. Wow. Okay. Cool. So uh, now it's rebuilt the, the services. Uh, but we want to scale them. Uh, so let's go to the group pedal cheap sheet. Okay. So what we want to do... the replica set. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's scale. To Redis cart. Okay, so now we've got Three, so let's take a look at that. Recommend it. Okay, so I need to scale the deployment. That's what I'm doing. Scale deployment. I see. I absolutely see. I, I screwed up. So let's take this back. I tripped at one. So I made that mistake. So I need to scale the deployment. There it is. So this is what we need to do. So The group cuddle, uh, auto scale, uh, we'll say deployment, this part. min three, actually min two, max. Okay, let's go ahead and look at that now. There it is. Now it's creating the additional um, replicas of Redis Carp so that if we run an attack against it, 
we should have uh, greater reliability uh, in the case of this particular uh, service not running properly. So let's see. Uh, sorry, let's get deployments. Sorry about that. The Reddit's car is currently at 2 of 2. It's at minimum. Uh, so let's create a new attack. And what we'll do is uh, we'll do it against containers. We don't want to target all the containers, obviously. So what I would like to find, I don't have any tags set for these. So. I guess I'm just gonna have to look for the Redis. Alright, so the container based one's a little. not really. So let's stick with Kubernetes based. That makes the most sense right now. So choose a namespace. What we'll do is we'll use the default, which is where the app lives right now. Uh, the deployments we're going to work on now are the the uh, Redis service, so Redis cart. So uh, this time, let's do um, state, or maybe yeah, no, let's do the same one. Network black hole. Uh, and let's auto scale. Let's say this is like a really critical service. So let's auto scale three, max five. Which is what I'm doing here. Options. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and run the same attack. So far, so good. Um, the site seems online. Ooh, I hit the wrong thing, but there we go. So it's killed Redis Cart. Let's see if it killed both, though. Yeah, it killed both nodes. So one of the things that I'm going to have to figure out is how do we um, not attack every single one at the same time so that we can have uh, it spread across the, the failures across a couple of the different nodes so that we can make, make sure that if one fails, the other one will be able to withstand. But I think that you kind of can get the understanding of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And what's really cool is that I can go ahead and take a look at this part in Datadog. And I can kind of manage what's, or monitor what's been going kind of on in the background in events. Uh, so rather than having to correlate every single one of these types of events, uh, via logs and manually, I can eventually go into the Datadog application and uh, look at all these different events here, correlate them with um, 
some sort of problem that I was doing or a real uh, like game day where we're doing chaos engineering tests. So um, that's that's really it for today's stream. Uh, I've done a lot. Um, and so I want to go over real quickly what I went over to today. Um, and I'm going to make sure that this is going to be on YouTube. So if you want to watch some of it again, you can. Um, so what I did was I built us an Azure Kubernetes service cluster. Uh, I showed you how to implement it with a role-based authentication if you want to have your own uh, Azure Container Registry and so that you can do builds and pulls from that particular registry if necessary. Um, I showed you that Azure Kubernetes Service has um, a ton of services built into uh, it as far as node pools so that you can expand uh, the number of node pools that you have available uh, and making it so that you can have different types of CPUs, GPUs, different kinds of workloads. Uh, you can increase and decrease the number of uh, nodes that are in a node pool. Uh, you can get access to uh, Docker networking, but you can scale from either three to up to six, 10, whatever um, underlying VMs that you need. Um, we have uh, built in a deployment center so that you can implement things like uh, Azure pipelines or uh, some of the other major services so that you can have deployments happen uh, right after you uh, make a new change uh, by GitHub or something of that nature. Uh, it's all capable of being implemented excuse me, this is all a little slow because my computer is running a little slow. Um, we've got monitoring that's built in using insights and metrics. However, uh, we, we, we talked a little bit about once we got our application running up and what was our application today? Um, it was Hipster Shop, which is just a microservices demo that you can get uh, online on GitHub. Matter of fact, Uh, let me go ahead and I'll put all of these types of uh, things in the chat room now. So, yeah, sorry, it's stuttering. Um, I'm running really bad on my uh, my CPU at the moment. Let me bring the music back down. Sorry about that. All right, so here is. The application I built today, uh, I just put that in the chat. If you want to be able to build this app, it's really, really simple in Kubernetes. Um, if you want to use my all-in-one script to actually create the cluster, that is in this repository that I'm gonna put into, like I said, sorry, my computer's a little slow at the moment, so I'm having a hard time doing a lot of stuff. My computer has hit a new level of crap. Um, I'm going to try to get these out all later. Uh, for some reason, my computer is just moving real slow. And that is probably a reason to want to end the stream. So, um, like I was saying, I I'm going to put the rest of the uh, links to different things that you'll be able to use in the uh, eventual video that will go on. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. I think it's been really useful to kind of do these things and learn more and more about how to stream and also to help teach you how to use these different products. Uh, Gremlin is great. I really recommend it. If you want to be able to do infrastructure testing uh, using chaos engineering, I think it's a really smart way of working with your infrastructure and, and building reliable applications. So uh, check out Gremlin. Um, you can get to their website at gremlin.com. Obviously, Datadog, datadoghq.com. And then uh, if you want to, Azure has a $200 uh, free demo that you can get access to. 
just Google Azure $200. I'll also put it in the notes uh, when I put the YouTube video up of this particular broadcast. So let me kind of bring this back. So yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching my stream today. It's been really fun kind of building this uh, stuff for you and having you watch. And maybe tomorrow I'll have a new thing to build and something else to show you. Until then, thanks for watching.